ultimately the whole method, methodical approach is to save time. I always hate that practicing more than absolutely necessary. So this way I figured out that how I only spend time on improving things which I don't know how yet. It's already mentioned, I think that one of the biggest time based is to keep practicing the same thing to what you already know how. Instead of making mental notes or pencil notes, here I have thoughts. And when you miss a note, don't correct that note. Only correct the, from where you get to that note. And then comes the Kazalsian thing, the conscience. If something doesn't sound, don't hope for nobody hearing it. But correct. Yes. How can we strengthen this part of our head? Uh, not with the Schumann business of doing all the exercises. <laughs> There is no particular exercise except that what I suggest sometimes, and we try it on the chair, to keep doing this. You can practice that without the cello until you feel that the, when it's curved, that the sensation of the sound in both hands has to be in the palm, not in the fingertips. The finger can't touch, but it has to be felt and this we do sometimes this kind of just don't overdo it because then then you can get uh, muscle pulled or whatnot. It's, it's a uh, basically a, a sensation feeling because it doesn't need that much muscle. But it's not just that it has to be strong, but it has to be flexible. So the flexibility is the one that counts, not not the strength of it. Unless the little kids can do it because little kids haven't got muscles yet. So over there, that's why I said that the little kids need sometimes to contact the ball like this so as to feel the solidity of the sound. But then it cramps the hand eventually unless they get rid of it. Yeah. Um, in your book, as well as like Cosmin and things like that, like there's double stops. The not yeah, the double stops, but uh, I always suggest that. Uh, uh, the first group is with the double fifth of the first figure. Mm -hmm. Forget it. Okay. <laughs> but when, when Eventually, yes, because of the fifths are the bane of our existence. And uh, Mr. Casado played a dirty trick on the cellists because he wrote fifths all over the place. When we played the Casado, uh, the Casado uh, that Casado fifths are, are the bane of existence. But you know, and he, every piece he wrote, I, or this fifth, fifth, fifth. But you know what he did? He used to have a metal ring around his thumb. <laughs> which means it made the fifth easy. But he didn't put that in as a big structure. <laughs> <laughs> I was a he was a great child still on that. <laughs> she has one too. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that can help, but uh, I am not advocating <laughs> 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 I have a question. I think I waste a lot of time from learning something in slow tempos to then trying to speed it up. Like, I think I do, you know, extra movements and things. Are you talking speed. about that uh, uh, agogic issue that I talked about? Yeah, or just how to practice a fast passage where you, you can't... You don't practice that on the child. Practice that in your mind without the child. To this I mean, the other he does, 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 he actually it becomes fewer units. It's most of the time at the end of sentences where there is a slight uh, 
slant down the way and not necessarily tap down the way. If it's really tap down the way, especially you have to make sure to feel the one, two, three, and start one. If the transitions usually which requires those unit changes. But in our music making, what we talked about, you talked about issues and so on, that uh, you need changes and interval awareness is the one that makes music more interesting. Otherwise comes the Chinese water torture. <laughs> Always the same. Well, Um, should we practice open strings or with scales or? No, for the board change is the uh, simplest, uh, very uh, entertaining, is that in the morning to try to go as slow with the bow as possible. And if you start hearing, then you know that something either is not continuing the action. And most of the time what happens is that the upper arm stops. That is the basic legato rule, what we call it. The first half of the bow is with the guitar arm, and the second half of the bow is with the forearm. However, when the forearm opens up, the upper arm must continue to rise, not behind your ears. <laughs> and first, when we are playing the pinup after solid sounds, always feel the weight at the beginning. So when you go on, uh, 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 what did I do or my hand is going this way or this way or something and you will discover that what is what's not functioning because the power line is broken. If you do this then trouble. Remember the swamp business, no swamp business. Okay. And this motion if you go into the swimming pool you can practice it. Well I had a Goodbye to you all. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it. I only hope at the end of this kind of gathering that you have received. I
ideas with which to work. I don't think any of you plays any piece better after this session than, than however, it's for the continuous improvement by using your mother, God, nature given brains and don't just wait until, you know, yeah, it's, it's nice, it's nice. But you find out what's wrong and search for connections and on podium search for holes so the child doesn't slip. <laughs> and also remember that chair business. That if you have a chance to or have a choice, then try to find out which is the one that allows you the maximum control over the instrument. Well, 